But we do know, based on research, that estrogen plays a role in regulating neurotransmitter pathways and neural receptors. And that's essentially signaling pathways that modulate certain neurotransmitters. Specifically, neurotransmitters, which are signals in the brain, include serotonin and noradrenaline. And those are really closely tied to the development and treatment of depression or depressive symptoms. And so why this is, is because estrogen receptors, as I've mentioned before, are scattered throughout the brain. And that includes regions that are responsible for mood and cognitive regulation, like the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus, which we talked about when we talked about the brain. But the way estrogen impacts serotonin and noradrenaline is actually considered positive, meaning that when you have estrogen, it actually boosts your mood. And that's particularly due to serotonin. And serotonin is sort of like the body's mood stabilizer. And all the treatments that we use for depression, they increase serotonin. And so how estrogen works is it limits the activity of enzymes called monoamine oxidases. And these break down serotonin. It also boosts the synthesis of tryptophan hydroxylase which is a very important enzyme in serotonin production. So based on these things, we're seeing an overall increase in the production of serotonin and the availability of serotonin because it's not getting broken down as quickly. Interestingly, there's also thoughts that estrogen may have mood enhancing or even antidepressant-like effects because it stimulates something called brain-derived neurotropic factor. And this is essentially a key molecule that's involved in plastic changes. So you've heard about neuroplasticity, right? It's involved in plastic changes related to learning and memory. And this acts like a protective agent for the brain. In terms of women going through menopause, studies have consistently shown that perimenopausal women have a higher risk of experiencing depressive symptoms compared to premenopausal women anywhere from 45 to 70 percent compared to 25 to 30 percent. That's a pretty big difference. Okay, listen up. This is so fascinating. There was a small study that found that the risk of depression that came on during the 24 months around the last menstrual period was 14 times higher than any period in the prior 31 years preceding it, meaning that 31 years before menopause, you were 14 times less likely to have depression than the time around menopause. And in another study, a double-blind randomized controlled trial, now these are like the gold standard studies where they take a treatment and the placebo and they compare them so we can really see head-to-head what are the difference. They found that perimenopausal and early postmenopausal women between the ages of 45 and 60 were given transdermal estradiol, which is a topical estrogen formulation, a patch, or a placebo for 12 months. And what they found was that the placebo group had a significantly higher likelihood of developing and reporting depressive symptoms compared to the group receiving estradiol. And the difference was 33% to 17%. So that's a pretty large difference in my mind. And they saw that these benefits were more common in women who were in early menopause transition. Now, we're going to talk about why everything seems to be better in the early menopause transition while we talk about the next section, which is heart health. So when we're thinking about cardiovascular health, you need to understand that there's also estrogen receptors, specifically ER-alpha and ER-beta receptors found in the vascular smooth muscle cells which are essentially muscle cells of the blood vessels and endothelial cells, which are those lining the blood vessels. And when estrogen attaches to these receptors, it actually promotes the production of a variety of substances like nitric oxide that widen or vasodilate blood vessels. And this prevents having excessive cell growth, which would lead to plaque formation. And at the same time, It inhibits the production of molecules that vasoconstrict or narrow the blood vessels. And these are essentially working together to prevent plaque formation. At this point in time, major organizations are not recommending hormone therapy or estrogen for the prevention of heart disease. However, there is evidence that suggests that women who start hormone therapy 
early, meaning before the age of 60 or within 10 years of menopause, they may actually experience benefit in terms of coronary artery disease and overall mortality. Now, again, why is it that everything seems to work better when you start it earlier? This is based on the theory that as you age, you're going to have more tissue damage, right? And so you want to start the hormone therapy before that occurs. It's because if the hormone therapy is initiated after plaques have formed because of aging or other comorbid conditions, estrogen actually destabilizes these plaques and then it increases the risk of stroke and cardiovascular disease. Whereas when you're young and healthy, it's a lot safer and essentially has much more benefit. So basically, when they analyzed all this data, they found that there was conflicting data because they didn't separate out young women to women who were older getting hormone therapy. So in a secondary analysis of the Women's Health Initiative data, where they looked at younger women, they found that there was a significant reduction in the combined occurrence of heart attacks, coronary artery revascularization, and coronary death in women from the ages of 50 to 59 who were randomized to receive estrogen therapy. In addition, there's been more than 40 observational studies that consistently show reduction by 30 to 50% in coronary artery disease among those who take hormones compared to those who do not. Now, there was what's called a Cochrane review, and this is basically a well-respected review that's done of all the literature. And so in 2015, they published a Cochrane review of randomized controlled trial data of hormone therapy. And basically what they found was that if you initiated that within 10 years of menopause onset, it lowered the risk of coronary artery disease in postmenopausal women by 48%. Let me say that again. If you take hormone therapy within the first 10 years of menopause, it can lower the risk of coronary artery disease by 48%. And it can reduce all-cause mortality, meaning death, by 30%. All-cause mortality by 30% with no increased risk of stroke. But there is still a small increased risk of venous thromboembolism but it's very similar to the risk that you get with oral contraceptives. Now, this is pretty remarkable, guys, that you can take a hormone that will reduce your risk of dying compared to someone who didn't take it by almost 30%. That is really, truly tremendous. Now we're gonna talk about vasomotor symptoms. These are defined as hot flashes, sudden intense sensations of heat, basically in the upper body, in the face, in the back, in the chest, which can last one to five minutes, and they are very common in menopause. In fact, it's estimated that by the year 2025, 1.1 billion women around the world will experience vasomotor symptoms. That is not a small number. That's a lot of women. Now, it's not just hot flashes. They often have sweating, chills, anxiety, and even heart palpitations. And these symptoms are not just short-lived. For some people, they can last up to seven years. In fact, in African Americans, they've been seen to last up to 10 years. Now, that is a long time to deal with hot flashes. Now, these occur because of dysfunction or abnormalities in a thermoregulation center in the brain specifically in the hypothalamic control center. Now, this is the area that controls the constriction or narrowing of the blood vessels and dilation of the blood vessels in response to temperature changes. So when it's hot, your blood vessels will dilate to let off heat and they'll constrict when you're cold. Now, abnormalities in this process during uh, menopause